congratulations on becoming a fellow of IE. Thank you. Um, you're, the, you're in the first group of fellows of a nationwide organization. I mean, were you surprised that out of all of the designers in the country, that sort of you were chosen? Well, I was, uh, I was delighted uh, to be asked, mainly because um, on paper, I'm not actually an interior designer. Mm -hmm. I'm a, an experiential designer, architect turned experiential designer. Uh, but I do think that the concept of me being a part of the of the IE group is that it embraces other disciplines uh, clearly. Yes, yeah. So, and I, I always think I'm slightly operating slightly outside of the, the the kind of defined field of interior design. So, for that, I'm very pleased. Thank you. Well, I, I have to say, so it's a great honour for us and for us here at Ravensbourne to have you. Uh, I suppose tell us a little bit about what you have been doing and also what inspires you uh, and that that presentation really touched on a lot of different things various cultures different mm. places it's mm. sort of set that sort of the place of the designer <coughs> is not simply being someone who works within their own environment but looks to so i suppose the world how has that been for you yeah well i think when drew in, introduced you know my my piece he, he'd done his research and he talked about us being storytellers and that's the essence of what we do. And understanding, um, you know, and I go back to my Venn diagram, which is very convenient. And, and as, I, as it says on the slide, it took 10 years to draw. Mm. And it's about, it's about space and architecture, place. It's about stories that need to be told, which is a cultural thing. You know, if we're working, uh, we're working in Malta at the moment, we're working in, in um, the Middle East, uh, we've worked in Japan. And we tell stories in a very different way. They're culturally based. And then communication media um, is the type of media we use, which can shift from uh, culture to culture as well. So this kind of mashup of architecture, story, and the communication of the stories is, um, is quite complex. Uh, but what I, I love it. I love what I do. I, I can't get up in the morning and start work quick enough. Is because we... It, we are enhancing the quality of people's lives to make them think about themselves, to make them think about their material culture. Um, it may be about science, technology, sport, ecology, boats, you know. I just don't know what it's going to be next, yeah. you know. It's fantastic. I'm so, I'm so happy with what I do. But the interesting thing in particular about you is this sense of collaboration. Yeah. You don't simply work with, uh, with architects or simply work with our designers. No. You work across a whole range of people in digital media and so on. Yeah. And here, and here at Radio yeah. Born, that's sort of that's sort that of resonates. Part, yeah, part yeah. Of what we do. Yeah. And, I'm, and what do you think the future of that is? Do you think do you think there's going to be people who will sort of work for ten years in one thing and move yeah. to something yeah. else? Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. And I think because, you know, because our you know future is in the hands of our children and our students and. And I just think they embrace the technologies so easily now. And that as far as they're concerned, everything's up for grabs. They can use what they like. So I think that the concept of students crossing the line at university yeah. is really accelerating. And I, I just think those boundaries and those corridors and the labels on the doors are all going to be broken down. You know, and, and I don't think that bothers the students of tomorrow, actually, or even the students of today. It doesn't bother them that they're not under a typology or a heading or a discipline or a domain. They're going to cross the line whether you like it or not. And, and ultimately, I think it's going to reinvigorate and reinvent the concept of what a design school is about, is that people will build their own programs, actually. Yes. You know, I, I think you'll give them a menu of programs and they'll piece them together in their own way. You and know, do, they'll be hybrids, you do, know. And do you think the rest of the industry is going to be accepting of that kind of new hybrid designer? Well, I, th I think, yeah, I, I think it's very interesting what's going to drive it. If the industry drives academia or whether academia drives industry, mm. And sometimes it could be the latter, you know, that you could, you know, because industry it probably is a bigger juggernaut to turn. True. Um, but it's market led, you know, it's the, the marketplace leads it. And, but I'm finding more and more that, you know, we work in exper the experiential domain and what is experiential media. And some people think experiential media is a website, an interactive website. Well, I, I don't. I think it's about interactive space. I think it's about people in real time, real space, uh, together, 
you know, live and, and making, bringing the um, live experience, um, you know, bringing it, you know, bringing it to, to bring it alive in, you know, in, in a really exciting way. So I'm, I'm, what I'm excited about in the way we use media is I want to get people actually out of their bedrooms and away from their laptops. I want to get them into space communicating and finding out things in real time and real space, you know. Uh, this is really interesting. So how did you start? Because you started at the AA, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, trained as an architect. Yeah. How did you move from being, from doing architecture yeah. into into making experiential environments that sort of we learn from? And yeah. You're, you're, you're you know you're really noted for that, whether it be the dome yeah. or a series of major major museum projects. Yeah. How did you move from one thing to another? Yeah, I think the big the big switch for me was when I did architecture, and, and it wasn't a formal training. It was at the AA, which was pretty informal. And I was working with archi I, was, I was studying with architects that were making buildings walk. You know, Ron Heron was making buildings walk. Peter Cook was covering them in media. You know, they were you know they were way ahead of their time. The Archigram Group. So I was kind of tuned up for it. And just by circum circumstance, by chance, I started working at the BBC. And I'll never forget. I walked into the BBC, and the group I was in were working on Mike Lee's Abbey Girls Party, which is a seminal piece yes. of. Um, of television, and then after ten years, I was working in light entertainment. I was working in drama. I was working in film. I was going on location, and I started to get this thing called a script. Now, the interesting thing is, a script is a story that unfolds. It has direction. People tell you what they want to happen. Uh, it has characters, and my job as a designer was to uh, design for characters, design for the script, design for the directions of the director. So suddenly, the you have to bring to life the written word, you know. Now, the big difference between a script and a brief is that it has a sense of uh, vitality, you know. It has an emotion attached to it. Briefs don't have that. Briefs are just prosaic pieces of information. It's a program of spaces. Yeah. It's an adjacency of spaces, you know, typically what architects mm. or interior designers would get. So I was very lucky. I was getting this kind of written document called a script, and I then realized that um, how important the written word is and how important as a production designer. And I worked in theatre as well, which is different from television and film, because mm. you have 500 sets of lenses. You know, you, a lens is a single thing in, in film or television, but in the theatre it's 500 lenses. It's a slightly different way of working. But I think it was the written word that excited me. And as a designer, how I interpreted the written word, you know, storytelling. And, and I think there's so much to learn from that. There's a very different way of looking at how you operate as a designer, or I suppose as a facilitator of, other, of people's visions, their, their dreams. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the other option is um, I might get, sometimes I get a straight brief, like at the, recently the Pompeii and Herculaneum at the British Museum. That was a fairly straight brief as opposed mm. to a script, you know. But I guess that, you know, I just ran away with it and I thought, well, my job is to bring the script to life, bring the brief, sorry, to life in, a, in almost a scripted way. So I'm, if you like, I'm kind of running with, when I get a brief, I turn it into a script. Right. <laughs> sort of thing. And one yeah. of the things is, is that, you know, you've known Ravensbourne students now for quite a few years. Mm. You've done a lot with supporting the development of courses and so on. Yeah. And what, what do you think the future might hold for them? What might, what, where might they look for inspiration? Apart from yourself, of course. <laughs> Um, well, I, I, you know, as I said earlier, I think it's just, you know, because it's very interesting. Uh, I have a, a son who's about th he's 13, and, and it's what it's made me realize is that for the first time in the history of education, and he's at a good school, the kids know more than the teachers. Mm. They know more about digital media than the teachers do. Now. That's pretty true. I mean, if you work for into tertiary education, yeah. it's not quite true because you, you've got a lot of very savvy people here. But a secondary education, it's very confusing for the kids because, you know, they're cutting movies, you know, yeah. they're, they're ripping stuff, they're laying down, you know, my son lays down music over images that he rips from BBC or whatever, and I go in and I see this incredible bit of movie making, way beyond anything I'm capable of. So I think that, um, you know, the time has come for them to be much more kind of, uh, you know, 
agile. They're much mm. more agile. And, and I think art school, you know, design schools have to watch this because the kids coming through now from secondary education are getting even more competent year on year on year, you know. And it's how, are you, you know, my question back to you is how are you going to adapt and be able to support this and, and, and provide the, uh, that kind of extra layer of knowledge and, um, and support? I know? think in many ways having, sort of having you visit and work with the students and introduce them to possibilities and yeah. being facilitators in our own right I think that's sort of our that's sort of the response that we think mm. is beginning to work quite mm. effectively, um, and certainly the graduates here are very fleet of foot. I mean, they master a range of yeah. techniques, but I think what's really interesting is this notion of transforming the brief into a script, yeah. into some kind of a story, something which you can present to others. I think that's something which we should start looking at as mm. something we offer to students. Mm. A different way of looking at how you, how you produce work. I think that's very distinctive. It's one, that's one of the most distinctive things that we've had in any of our conversations yeah. about where the future lies. Yeah. It's that ability to think of things as stories. Yeah. A narrative not simply about uh, a beginning and an end, yeah. but part of a dialogue or a conversation. Yeah. You see, I think you, know, I think you might find that in your course, in, in this kind of... 3D domain mm. that you may start using script writers. Yes. You, know, you may start actually, you, you know, using people that are very versatile and understand the written word, understand storytelling, narrative construction, and you might think, well, what's the re what's the point? What's the relevance? But you know, I think the sort of work we're doing is demonstrates the, the value of students that can understand how to use communication media to tell stories in interior spaces you know interior spaces are, can be have another dimension and, and that dimension is held is in a domain apparently of other disciplines but I think you're going to be able to draw those in so exciting times well professor Peter Higgins <laughs> once again thank you very much thank you thanks Leighton thank I've enjoyed you. it thank you